Well, for all you ham radio aficionados, look at this. Yes, it's a Drake T4XB. This is the first Drake model I cut my teeth on in 2021, August 2021, when I got my first Drake on eBay. It was a T4XB, and I had fun trying to figure it out. That one was really sick. But I know now what to do with these things. Anyway, this one came in from Colorado, and it had hardly any tubes in it. There's still some tubes missing, and it's hard to get a 12AX7 tube unless you want to pay 50 bucks. 50 bucks for a 12AX7, and so I'm going to try 12AT7s. And I did get a few tubes off of this, off eBay for this thing. Um, I did get an OA2 in here. It's all lit up. And that's working. This tube here is hard to get. The socket 6HS6, I think, or that one is unobtainium unless you want to pay big bucks for it. So I'm going to try and put a uh, substitute tube in there. It was pretty close on the uh, matching the transconductance and all that stuff. Um, I had to put in two 6AU6s. Is that one even lit up? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. And then I need a 12BY7. That's coming in the mail. 12BY7's gone. And I need two finals. I have one final here that I got in the mail. Anyway, why is the final out? Well, I had that final tube plugged in there, but you won't get uh, two finals lit because they're 6-volt heaters in parallel. So they'll light off of the 12-volt heater voltage if they're both in there. So I took the final back out. And why did I take it out? Well, I fired this thing up with the Heathkit power supply and immediately, well, it worked for about five or 10 seconds. And then I heard like a pretty good, then I could smell something burning actually, like resistor burning. And I turned it off, turned it back on, and then it went like into a zap mode. And I turned it back off and turned it on and zapped a little more. Then I turned it over and I found the, uh, burnt resistor. It's the first resistor, I think, on this switch or that switch. It's toward the front. I guess I could lift the radio up, but I don't want to. It's turned on. Anyway, so so then I'm looking around thinking, what could be shorted? And I found a big glob of solder that was, that was inside the final cage. If you see this, this pole device, that's the um, RF choke <coughs> for the finals. And right down where that brown capacitor is, a big round one, there was a big hunk of solder between those two leads and it was hitting ground, I think. So I think that was my, my issue. <coughs> so anyway, this thing will probably fire up now. <coughs> I'm just kind of burning it in. So I have the 800 volts on and the 250 volts is on. And we have 12 volt heater and I'm just now letting it run, figuring if it's gonna short out, let it short out and it's working. So I'm not sure what was shorting, corrosion, bad solder joints, I don't know. And there's been somebody in here fingering around with it. So there's lots of weird stuff on the bottom that I gotta figure out. But for now, <coughs> it has power. And when the rest of the tubes come in, I'll try to see if it'll work. We'll go from there. Anyway, yeah, I like the Drake uh, T4XB. This is the one I started off with. And this one, <coughs> boy, excuse me. This one's pretty clean. And I even have some relays clicking here. So that's a good sign. And if I go to tune, I hear it clicking. So it seems like this thing's sort of, sort of there. <coughs> of course, without the mixer tube in there, it's not gonna work. And without the driver, it's not gonna drive me to finals. And without, if I guess it would needs two finals because the heaters to work and then I can test it. So it's gonna be a while, but I can try and polish it up this weekend, get it cleaned up. 
get it ready for the new tubes. Clean the connections on the bottom. Look for bad solder joints and stuff in there and uh, go from there. Actually, let me turn this thing off and show you what happened to it. So, turn off the power supply down here. That turns off the power supply. 800 volts will bleed down eventually. And I don't want to get shocked here, so I'm just going to pick it up like this and show you the underside. Okay, so here's the underside. Somebody measured the crystals there and mocked them all up real nice. Anyway, here's the, uh, what do they call that? De deterious or something? What deteriorated? Deterious? There's the culprit right there that burned up. The resistor, it's all white because it was like flaming and the switch made it through, I think, okay, but it really was an arc. There was a fire under there, so I think my switch, the rotary switch is okay. That wafer is okay, so I got to clean that up. But before I get too serious about this radio, I have to look now with a, an eagle eye for shorts in this thing. So yeah, the golden screwdriver was in here for sure. Looks like they were mucking around with uh, with this. Um, this looks non-standard here. Just some fixing like five of these. That looks okay for so now. This looks like though it's, somebody was monkeying around. This, uh, I'm not sure about it. I don't have another one of these to compare it against. So uh, I guess I could compare my old pictures, which I probably deleted. Anyway, it looks like the rest of it's pretty good. So we'll go from there. There's the uh, caps for adjusting each band. Ah, that's what I like about this thing. On the T4, T, TR4, there aren't these caps for each band. It's kind of using uh, tuning slugs and I don't know. This seems more precise to me. And there's the evil 90 degree transmission gear. I wonder how much play that has in it. Let's see if it'll, if we can wiggle it a bit. Oh boy. This one has a good bit of play, but as long as it works, I guess we don't care. Yeah, it's somewhat working. There is some play in it. Yeah, okay, you can see the thing wiggle whack on there. But it's no worse than the others, I guess. Anyway, that's my little tour of the uh, of the gem here to fix. Replace all these paper capacitors here later on. Get those done this weekend, maybe. Clean up the switches. How are they looking? Probably filthy. Like teeth, they never get brushed. Um, yeah, what's funny is there's less switches in this thing than in a TR4 which is refreshing if you're having to clean these things. Yeah, there's a lot less of them in here. It's kind of nice. And this one I got to clean up. And what, what else is a problem with these is the uh, sideband filter. So on these earlier ones, let's see, how early is this thing? This is a what? Yeah, it's a... Uh, Spare something, spare. I don't know what that means. Okay, so 6ADL. So anyway, down here, this thing gave me hell on the first Drake I ever fixed. So this lovely sideband filter, which I mount down beneath later on, but <clears throat> what I found was these wires here are too stiff. And uh, it doesn't have good contact sometimes, so we'll see how this one works out. Clean it up, just see how it runs. All right, so that's about it. This thing uh, isn't in the best shape as far as the deck goes, but it's not the worst I've seen. It's uh, a little dirty. I'm not going to soak it in water or anything, I don't think. I used to do that, but... I don't think I'll do that with this one. I'm just going to try and clean it the best I can. That's going to be a long process getting all the crud off this thing if I don't 
blast it with water, which I don't think I'm going to do. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day.